Hey YouTube, I've just come off the Atlantis 2020 New Zealand to Australia ship cruise. So I thought I would put up some vlogs and talk about my experiences and give you guys some tips that I've never been on a cruise before. It was my first cruise and I learned a lot of things um, that I had not done before. So I thought I'd share them with you. This particular vlog, I wanted to talk about how to meet people. That was one of the big things as a single guy. Uh, you know, when you're partnered up, you know, you've got a buffer, you've got someone to go to dinner with, and when you're a single guy, you've really got to work at it. And so, there's many opportunities to meet people, but you have to put in the work. And so, this vlog will be about the things that I learned and the tips that I've, I've picked up on that cruise. So, the first thing is, um, even before the cruise starts, they put up a Facebook and a WhatsApp uh, link. And so this was a really good opportunity months, like two, three, four months before the actual cruise to put your picture up, to say, hey everybody, give yourself a bit of an introduction, join some conversations. People will talk about, you know, uh, if they've been to New Zealand before, do some recommendations. So it's a really good research uh, tool to go on Facebook or to go on any social media before the actual cruise. I found that to be really helpful. And uh, funnily enough, you know, when it be on the on the cruise or when we were on offshore and going on excursions, people would say, "Hey, I saw your photo on um, Facebook." So it does pay to do that. That was really handy before the cruise. Uh, the second thing is, the first forty eight hours is the most important time to meet people. People are coming together. People are forming their groups. So if you go there with the, the lackadaisy attitude, oh, I'll just meet some people as I go along, the, maximize your chances of making new friends, finding that cruise boyfriend if you can, um, or even just having fun. You know, you, you've basically got to do it in the first 48 hours. How do you do that? They have a sail away party. So you get on the first day, you get your stuff on board, um, go upstairs to the, the top deck, <coughs> Start introducing yourself to people, uh, you know, and it can be single or it can be groups. Look for people on the tables that are just sitting down. Ask them, can you join them? Um, find the cutest guy in the room. Go up and speak to him. You know, this is where it's a really social thing at this sail away party. So um, maximize that and go to the sail away party and introduce yourself and smile and just say, hey, can I join you? People there were really friendly. Um, no one ever said no. The, being my first time, I had so many questions about how does it work and what do you do and you know how do the activities work and, and you're quite excited and it's, it can be quite overwhelming, particularly if you have things like social anxiety as well. Most people are super cool and so just ask them, you know, have, is this your first cruise? Have you been on a cruise before? Tell me about your experiences. Most people uh, are quite understanding and um, know that if you've never done it before you have no blueprint to know what to do or how to start your vacation and most people are really friendly about that. Uh, there's a couple of people that you know don't like to hear the questions, 50 questions kind of thing and <laughs> they'll let you know that but on the whole people are really super friendly. So don't be afraid to go up to a group or a single people and just work the room, work the room Try and talk to as many people as you can at the sail away party. The, um, the next thing too is uh, go to the singles dinner. There'll be a singles uh, uh, dinner and a singles uh, event. Let me show you an example on one of my um, daily things here. Okay, so you can see here at 7 o'clock we have Atlantis singles dinner. And, you know, it doesn't even really need to be the singles dinner. When you, you can go to the main dining room and ask to join a table of 10. Sounds a bit daunting, doesn't it, if you've never done it before. But it's actually kind of cool because I've been on smaller tables and unless you know the people, the, the, the conversations are, 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 you know, a lot more intimate. But if you're on a big table of 10, then you can um, talk to people and, and ma again, maximize your chance of meeting people. It's a hit and miss. Sometimes you can get a really gr good group of people 
and you can have some great conversations. Sometimes you go there and the conversations and, and nothing you know about or nothing that you're interested in. But it just, it's about, uh, you know, learning a bit about people and um, finding out where they're from and, and just sort of, again, social connections. So the singles dinner, or just even going to the main dining room and asking to join a table of 10. You're at the larger, the more chance you're gonna to get to meet people. Also what they do, and this is like crucial, if you want to meet people and you're single, is they have like um, single meets. So this was on another one. So as you can see down here, it says seven o'clock single meet. And what that usually means, it, it usually happens sometimes before the actual dinner. So you will go there on the first night in particular, go to the first night, I'm seriously. You go there, people like yourself, yeah, okay, you're gonna get some people that are in couples that say they're singles. So, you know, that can be uh, a misleader. But most people there are single and um, you just go there and you have a drink and you talk a bit about yourself and it's set up specifically for that. The first 48 hours, go to the single meets because that's how you're gonna form your groups and how you're gonna maximize your chances. By day four, six, eight, people already in their groups. So the first 48 hours is so important. So people that go to the single meets will then often go to the dinner afterwards. So you meet people and you sort of suss out who you really like or what group you feel comfortable with and then say to them, hey, let's go to dinner. So you then get to know them better. And then after that, there's usually like a show, like a cabaret show or something like that. And just say, hey, let's go to the show together. This is also a really good opportunity to talk about what the excursion is the next day. If you really like somebody or if you really like a couple or if you really like a group and you want to get to know them better, there's nothing better than joining them the next day when you go on shore. What I was noticing, and I fell into this trap at the beginning as well, was I was just going out by myself. Yeah, okay, I enjoy my solitude, I enjoy my private time, and you don't really, you know, on the ship it's more about talking to people. But I found that, particularly again for forming groups, that um, it would have been handier to, you know, when you're at the dinner to say, hey, what excursion are you going on tomorrow? I'm by myself. You just come from the singles. You know this this table are full of single people. Hey, can I join your group? Can I join your partner? You know, can we go on, on uh, land and have a, an adventure together? Uh, they can only say no. And the times that I've asked, people said yes. The thing, the trick with that is, and I'll share an experience is, there was a really nice couple uh, or a group of people I was playing Texas Hold'em poker with in the casino. And I really wanted to get to know them better on um, one of the, the sort of last excursions. And I said, hey, can I join you guys on land tomorrow? And they said, sure. Now, I didn't specify a time, and they were very, when, they were a casino, very goal oriented people, so I thought they were gonna get up pretty early. So I was excited, and I got up at eight o'clock, went to, to breakfast, didn't get a text from them. 8.30 comes, still haven't got a text from them. Nine o'clock comes, no text from them, and I'm starting to think, uh, maybe they were just being nice. Maybe they really don't mean to join them. I, I don't know. And by 9.30, I met, I ran into another group of people. <coughs> and so they said, hey, come with us. And I was like, do I stay and take the chance that these people are gonna text me, or do I just go with this group now? And I thought, uh, it was a, you know, I texted them um, via the Navigator app, but I didn't hear back from them. So, and I didn't want to be pushy either. I didn't want to like get on their back. So they were going to, they said they were going to text me. So I went on, on shore and I missed out. I saw them later on when I got on the ship again, I checked my phone and sure enough, they had texted me at 10.30. So they had a sleep in and it's not on them. It's on me. I should have used my communication better said, Hey, can you text me by 9.30 or something like that? Uh, again, it's, it's, it's imposing on them, but at least it gives them a ballpark of them to respond to you. And it sort of sets up the, the communication that they'll let you know by them. If you leave it open-ended like I did, they could text you at 11, 12, because you've got all day to get off the ship, right? So I was really disappointed in myself that I missed this really good opportunity. But what I learned from it um, is about communication. And uh, in other vlogs, I'll talk a bit about some hit and misses with um, relationships and and uh, certain situations I got in that if I had used my communication skills better, I would have maximized my chances with more meeting more people and more fun. But hey, you you learn as you go along. Um, so I think I might leave it there. Actually, I'll just do a quick review 
where the where to meet people. So I was on the Nord Arm. Um, um, so doing any activities like the singles activities I talked about, there were beer tours and wine tasting tours and all sorts of different events you can um, meet people. So put your names down for that. Um, the Lido deck, which is up the top, where you, it's like a buffet, that at night time um, is a great social area. People take books, people are taking up dominoes, and at, at 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, they didn't go to the parties, but they were just hanging out at the Lido, uh, just having a, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or even you know a beverage, an alcoholic beverage, and it became a real social meet. Also, to be honest, it was also a bit of a cruising meet. So, you know, you would circle around and see if you uh, found someone cute and just go over and sit down and talk to them. I did it and people had done it to me too. No one ever says no. You get a, a clear vibe, you know, when you sit down with someone, whether or not they're interested in you pretty quickly because the, the conversation will either be hard work or it will be, you know, it'll uh, flow. So, um, if you want to meet people at night time and you've got nothing happening, go up to the Lido deck or go up to the buffet area because it was a real um, social and cruisy sort of atmosphere. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, just uh, the dinners, the single events. Um, the main thing is just, as I said, put the work in. You know, when you're single and you walk out that cabin, you know, you, you're on, basically. So, you know, if you don't go in and talk to people, talk to people in elevators, just talking to people anywhere. I'll tell you a quick story and I'll finish up. Uh, I had a situation happen to me at, at desk services, which was a bit crazy. And I got into the elevator and I just started talking to four or five people that were on their way to dinner. And I was talking about this crazy experience they had, which was uh, just bizarre. And they were all amazed at it as well. Anyway, I, on the last night of the cruise, as we were putting our um, suitcases out the front, one of the guys that was in the elevator asked me how did I go with my situation. So people will remember who you are and they remember the stories you tell. So um, all through the whole cruise you're meeting people. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, I'm going to do some other vlogs about my experiences, talk about some of the great uh, fun I had and the great times I had. And uh, hopefully this will be for people that, you know, have not been on a cruise, want to know what it's like, um, want a different perspective of what um, my cruise ex experience was as opposed to other people and I really hope that it encourages you to go on to the cruise because it was really good fun it was really well catered for the staff were excellent Atlantis were excellent the music was so much fun the party was so much fun um, the shows were great so uh, I really like to share those experiences with you too uh, that's the 2020 New Zealand to Australia Mardi Gras ship cruise. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.